Just uh, really proud of, well, first of all, thank you for being here. I appreciate everybody coming to the game here on a Wednesday night, and I had to get you guys all into it a little bit, but uh, I, I really appreciate uh, people showing up and, and supporting this team, and, and uh, you know, it's what it's about. We, we want to share this with everybody. But, uh, you know, credit to, to Purdue Fort Wayne. John has a great team. He's a very good coach. They got vets on that team. They got older guys, and they're tough. And I told our guys, those are the teams that beat high major teams because they have the pieces, they have the experience, the strength, and the toughness, and they showed it today. And that's one reason why I think they're picked really high in their league, pick win the league, and I, I really hope they do. I think they're going to win a lot of games. But uh, that was – we needed that. We needed adversity. We needed some things not to go our way and how we responded to it. I thought the guys took momentum in, into the locker room at halftime with the last two minutes. And then uh, Ace got on a heater there to start the second half, got us going. And our defense wasn't very good today, but we showed we could score uh, in bunches. And uh, we didn't have a great practice yesterday, and I thought that carried over to the game, and that's on me. I, I, I got to get these guys ready to go. But I just like the resolve of our guys. Uh, different guys stepped up, and I thought the 17 offensive rebounds really helped us uh, uh, get going and uh, keep keep things rolling. So. Uh, Really proud of our second half, uh, and I just uh, I think we have a long way to go, but I think we can get a lot better, which which could be a lot of fun too. Mike, they they were beating you in some hustle areas. At least it looked like that from from my perspective. Offensive rebounds, you weren't really turning them over. What's your message at the half, and is that just part of the ebb and flow of a season where you're not going to be playing at that level every single yeah, half? Yeah, some games, Mark, you're not going to turn everybody over, but you're going to have a cumulative effect. They called some timeouts late in the game because they were dragging, and uh, they missed some of those runners and layups that they they made in the first half. They didn't make it late in the game, and I'm not always saying it's a, it's because of fatigue, but I thought there was a level of fatigue out there. And I told the guys, if we get to fatigue, th then we'll win. If we make the game, we get to fa to the fatigue game, we're gonna win. And I thought we did that in the last seven eight minutes of the game, and. Uh, you know, we want our opponents to call timeouts because they're because they're, 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 they're sucking wind, and uh, and that's important to us. And we use that as fuel so to find more. That's just how we do it. Some days you're going to turn people over. Some days it's a tough shot at the end of the, the beating the pressure, uh, a, a, a challenge at the rim against Yannick, or a hard floater on a run with someone running you down. It's a cumulative effect. But I thought you, you're definitely right. I thought early in the game they beat us to rebounds, they beat us to loose balls, and. A good team like that, a veteran team, they can get going on the road, and that's what they did. Mike, why wasn't yesterday's practice good, and what did you see carry over? Into yeah, that? you know, it's crazy because the day before, we had a really good practice, and I was, like, fired up. I went home, and I was, like, pumped. Uh, 18 to 22-year-olds, that's why we didn't have a practice yesterday. As much as we want them to be great every day, they're not going to be. So what's our resolve? What's our response? And And – you know, sometimes I'm ready, I want to kill them, right? And then they show up the next day and they're awesome. And then they're awesome and the next day you're like, where where are you guys? Like, that's, but that's also the joy of coaching, John. That's like, you know, you got to find, you got to find, you got to go inside of them and figure it out sometimes. And today we, fi it, it took us 20 minutes to find it. Okay. Now, I, it wasn't a loss that got their attention. It's going to be the tape tomorrow that's going to get their attention and say, hey, this isn't good enough where we're trying to go. Um, and if we can learn, you, know, you always want to learn in, in victory uh, than defeat. And, uh, you know, today was an example of that. Coach Ace had 15 points, four for four from three in the second half, but he also had nine assists. Can you talk a little bit about his ability to be a complete player and how he can go into that killer mode and then also help out his teammates? Yeah, he was plus 21 in the second half. He's like he's minus seven and a half. I, I thought he was not sluggish. I never say Ace is sluggish because he, he competes, man, but he wasn't playing with a little bit enough juice pace. And I just said to him, I said, if you don't play with pace, what do you think your teammates are going to do? And just thought play with a little bit more edge, a little more pace. We put a lot on him. You know, we all know he's, you know, he's, he's, he's guarding another team's best player. He's pressing. He's getting pressed. Uh, he's getting jumped on ball screens. We use him in ball screens all the time. And then clock's down. We ask him to go make a play. Like, we ask him to do a lot. But good players want to do a lot. But I also think when you, when you play with pace and a little more edge, like, he's pretty good. And that I wish I could say that was coaching. That's 
beginning of that second half, no, that's a really good player. Let let him go play. Mike, you, you talk about uh, oh, yeah. getting competition here. <laughs> You talk about getting this team's attention with without it being a loss. Is yeah. is that the mark of a of a mature team? And and how important uh, is it to be able to, you know, not have that setback in order to take these steps? Yeah, I mean, I, it doesn't always have to be a an older mature team, but that really helps, right? Let's let's like, as I always say, let's have real talk, fellas. Real talk. That first half's not good enough. Our defense today's not good enough. They all agreed. Um, but I I just I I think. What, what the most important thing of is, is it's communicating with your players, the whole staff communicating with our players, right? Let's let's talk about the good stuff and keep we're using that and building on that and the stuff that wasn't good today. Let's 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 teach them and let's get better. Like, so I mean, excuse my French, but like if I make it a bitch session because it wasn't to our standard, then they're gonna you know what do kids do? Ah, oh, no, oh, here he goes again. Like. It's all about learning. Like, we got to learn. We got to keep getting better. You got to keep moving forward. Like, that's my line all the time. For the young guys that aren't playing enough, work while you wait, right? Work while you wait. If you're out there and you make some mistakes, own the mistake and get better. And then that's where the staff comes in. And, and if you're high level communicators as coaching staff with your players, I'm going to sit down and watch tape with some of our guys. And, um, and it's not. We're not, it's not punishment. It's only about getting better. And if you have that mentality in a program, then there's a lot of growth. I think that's the most important thing for us. And, you know, I used to yell all the time because that's what I thought you used to do when I was a 25 year old coach. And I realized, man, I tuned myself, I tuned the coach out too. So it's all about growing and growth and, and moving forward. That's the key. Coach, Nick brought a lot of energy in the second half tonight. Just what did you see from him, especially down the stretch? He's the juice maker. He, I'm serious. He's the juice maker. He brings juice. He brings joy to the gym every day. His smile's infectious. He has got an edge. He played for a great high school coach and program at Vachon in St. Louis where, I mean, if you showed up, you got to work and you got to get after it. But he loves competing. He loves basketball. And he could do so many different things that impact winning. And, of course, he got some steals. And you saw what he's capable of doing to the rim. But, like, it was, he was blowing up screens. He was helping. And, like, that's winning basketball. And I always tell these guys, like, you leave your mark on a program, not by your stat line, by do you impact winning? Do you help your team win? With him, check all the boxes. And he, he's he's the juice maker. Uh, Mike right here. Um, do you, oh, no, no, yeah, I know. Like, um, do you have a status update on, on Eli and Miles? And also, h how have you seen them kind of handle this, this like period? Like mature. Yeah. So uh, Miles is getting closer. You know, there's there's protocols to, to his injury. So uh, but we're, he's he's working with me and, our, and Big B and our staff. And he's jumping into practice, but certain things are still off. But he's getting closer, and I'm excited about that. And uh, – you know, Eli just has a just a recurring injury that we just you know we just got to keep our eye on here and all that stuff. And he's doing a heck of a job working on it. The dude, the poor guy's living in the training room trying to get back. But you know, uh, you guys have heard me say it. I don't care about the games. My number one thing with these guys is their health, their safety, and their wellness. And uh, that's that's number one. We're going to make sure these guys are 100. We're going to make sure they're healthy and right uh, before we put them back out there. Coach right here, you guys had 25 assists tonight. Um, when this team gets rolling offensively, um, you know, what is it like just to be a part of that, you know, on the sidelines? How connected Heck, is this I'd rather play it watch. Uh, share the ball like that, it's just fun, right? You know, it, that just says about they're playing the right way, okay? They're playing the right way, and there's enough opportunities for everyone to get their piece, as I say. And, like, you know, now, you guys don't understand this, but the hardest thing coaching these days is is keeping the noise outside so our guys play the right way and be all about winning. Man, I, you got to get yours. You got to do this, man. You got you to get coach to put you in this position. You got to get your touches and your shots. Man, one day it's your turn. The next day it's somebody else's. But the way we play with pace, right, we want to create offense with our defense. We want that ball to be hot. Who cares who gets the credit? You know what I mean? It's all about Penn State getting a score, Penn State getting a stop, and Penn State getting a victory. And if you have that mentality, 
like I always say, you, you be all about the name on the front, the name on the back will prosper. I totally believe that. Would, and I learned that when I was in school. I, I, was, I always said I was a selfish winner. I wanted to win so bad. I'd crush my teammates. I, I, I would talk back to my coach. And then, man, I, my sophomore year, it was an epiphany. Why am I so mad and so emotional about playing the game? I love the most. It's the thing I love the most. Man, be about your team. Be about all the right stuff. Whatever the coach says to you, it's for one thing and one thing only, to make you and the team better. So the heck with all the noise. And we're trying to get these guys to understand that. And that's hard because they hear stuff from home. They hear from their boys. They hear stuff on social media and all that stuff. But, man, if, if you can do that for a long period of time, your growth and the impact you have on your team would be awesome. And, and I talk about it all the time. I have no problem saying, say if you're in the moment here at Penn State, man, you're going to be all right. Uh, Coach, uh, I know it's a little bit different level of opponent, but how would you how would you rate Yannick's impact and also Kachi off the bench? You know, playing this game after after they had their outing against yeah, Virginia Tech. Yeah, I love Yannick's response from the last two games. Man, he's so coachable. He's so into it. He plays with great joy, and he had got off to a good start. Got in foul trouble for two games. I thought he did a great job rebounding, protecting the rim today, finishing through contact. He was getting mauled. He was getting pushed in the back. But I loved it that he just kept playing. And there, you know, it doesn't show up as steals, but at the end of the press or on penetration, he comes over and cleans some stuff up for his teammates, and we're off to the races and create offense. That's another weapon we have there. I thought Kachi's toughness around the rim while I was in there and finishing was huge. And, you know, we'll get Miles back soon. So we got three guys like that with high motors, versatile players. You know, that, that's, what, that's what we want. Um, I just I, I I love how coachable those guys and like when they mess up they own it and just move on and that's how you got to be. Coach back here at the beginning of the season Nick told me that one word he would use to describe this unit is truthful and the transparency that they could have between each other in the locker room. How have you seen that especially today when you're going into halftime with a, with a deficit and how they respond to your message and also the thoughts that they bring forward about what they can do to be better. Couldn't videotape the first few minutes of the locker room where the coaches are talking and they're by themselves, but you could hear them talking about the first half. Not good enough. Call each other out. And uh, when you're a great teammate and you work really hard and then you could call your teammate out, it's, it's real talk. There's ownership in that. That's accountability. Holding your, but but the number one part of leadership is you got to take care of your own stuff first, and then when you hold somebody else accountable, they'll listen because they have respect for you. I think there's a lot of respect in that locker room. I think there's leadership, competitive leadership. They're not afraid to call each other out and move on. I don't think our guys uh, catch feelings, and that's that's and that's hard because 18 to 23 year olds, we catch feelings. I mean, we all you guys all know, right? I mean, we're sensitive, but I I, I think. I think this group has is a little hardened, a little edge, but I think they get along so well. They, I never see one guy by himself. It's three or four or five or six, and you know you could have real talk all the time. I think that really helps. The students are here. All right, we got to get one question from the students here. Put you on the hot seat. One student, give him a mic. Okay. Okay. All right, what, what's your name? I'm Molly. Molly, what year are you? I'm a senior. And where are you from? Rhode Island. Rhode Island, awesome. Um, so I get, you already talked a lot about Ace Baldwin tonight, obviously a huge contributor. He was shut down for a majority of the first half by the other team. How do you prepare going into games like this, especially knowing that other teams are going to come in preparing to try to shut him down, and how do you get the rest of your team rallying when he can't be the one to start the momentum? Yeah, yeah. awesome question. Other guys got to step up. Um, you know, Ace doesn't have to get going just by scoring, but I think he needs to get everybody going by getting us in the stuff quicker, moving the ball, maybe getting on the break so there's not as much attention on him. Uh, but I also think other guys, you know, I think early in the game, other guys got to get in, in, in into it. But I think the biggest thing, when Ace has pace, we all have pace, and then everybody's a threat that way. And the last thing I'm going to say, I'm sorry I'm taking all this time, so uh, I, this is to everybody that shows up to games at the BJC, okay? The, 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 the talk and the, what we used to say about the BJC and how quiet it is. I'm challenging all of you, right? The old Penn Staters, the middle-aged middle 
Penn Staters like me and all the young ones, all the students, every one of us. Get out of your get out of your seat, get on your feet, sweat with us, okay? This don't we don't need popcorn at this game. Get your butts out of the seats. We will fight for you guys. I want you sweating with everybody. We should never have the BJC quiet. I don't care how big the BJC is. Like we're not making any excuses around here. But I need you all. So if you come to the game, man, bring some, get some extra Gatorade and some water and sweat with us and get into the game. And I, for the, for, for the older people like me and up, right, it's a great day for exercise. In your seat, out of your seat. In your seat, out of your seat. Stand up. All right, it's great for us. For all you young people, get crazy with it. And bring your friends with you all the time. We're, you're not going to get in trouble for being an idiot for 40 minutes. I got your back. But I, I want to build this program with all of you guys, and I want it to be a fun night in State College every time we play. Has everybody got it? Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it.